Number four, American Dragon Jake Long. My god, this show was fucking... Well, to be honest, I think Disney Channel was trying to be hip. Like they, like they did that in the 90s with the Goof Troop and a Goofy movie and everything. But I swear that they might, they might have been trying to be hip again, considering there was kind of... Jake was this kind of hip-hop rock star-ish type, like a teen, you know, you know, and the friends, they skateboard and everything, that's all fine and dandy, whatever, that didn't bother, it doesn't bother me a whole lot now, or even back then, but, now, this was the other show that I was talking about that went through animation change when it got to its second season, now, when I was a little kid, that bothered me, because I guess when you're a little kid, you don't really like change that much, especially if it's, even if it's something minor like that, but now, the animation in the second season was better, actually, it looked way better, and, you know, he went from being kind of this muscular dragon to like a skinny dragon, which I guess a lot of people still have a problem with, but I thought it looked better, and they even made a promo of the second season where they even, like, kind of made fun of, well, they referenced the fact that there's an animation change, and he's like, yeah, I went from being big to this nice, slim and body, yeah, because he talked, he talked weird like that. And the family, there was Haley, his little sister, she was a little pink dragon, and yeah, I can't, I don't think she had much of a personality after, no, she did, she did, she was an interesting character. She uh, had her own episodes, I believe, where the talking dog, God, what the fuck was his name? I think he was voiced by John DiMaggio, Maggio, whatever. You know, Bender from Futurama or Jake from Adventure Time. I swear, I think that's who voiced him. And if that's true, then it wasn't the first time he voiced a dog, too. You know, an Adventure Time reference. But, you know, it's not that bad of a cartoon. But, you know, cartoon shows nowadays are very hard to find. You know, ones that are good. So, in that episode, there was like... I think it was a show and tell, and there was this weird cat with that, they, they, like, they're really old, they're really old, they've been around for centuries, I believe, I think they revealed, and uh, <clears throat> they, like, always got in the fights over, like, a necklace that the dog has, I really wish I could remember his name, damn it, and so... Yeah, and, like, they go around destroying, like, the classrooms and stuff, and Haley's getting in trouble for the dog anyways, but it's her responsibility, technically. And they're supposed to be in cages, and they, like, ruin Sloppy Joe Day, and you love Sloppy Joe for some reason. The grandpa, my god, he was kind of like a Mr. Miyagi, sort of, of that show, but he had his funny moments. I guess he's like a mi mixture of Mr. Miyagi and Splinter from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I guess to say, but he was a human, he was a really old, wise guy. Not wise guy, like wise guy, but you know, he was smart. So, and they, they ran this potion shop that never, I think it was a potion shop, they never had any customers. So how they stayed in business, I don't know. They did get some visits from like the Grim Reaper in one episode, that was pretty funny. But what was his name, Greg? <laughs> or something like that? I think that might have been a reference to something, I really don't know. But, yeah, oh, Rose, man. Rose, like, from the first episode, um, you could tell that they were going to at least attempt a sort of romance between Jake and Rose. Well, they did, but... And she was one of the main villains that he went after, and they didn't, like, find that out later until maybe that season or season two. Again, I think the show only lasted two seasons. Like, what the fuck, Disney, come on. You need to get your shit together, but, well, it's gotten too late now, I guess. <clears throat> I don't know, they could, they could probably bring some of these shows back. They should. You know, new episodes and reruns, and, you know, if Teen Nick can have, like, 90s Nick, you know what, no, if Cartoon Network has a boomerang, why doesn't Disney Channel have a <coughs> Disney Channel old edition? I couldn't come up with a clever name, sorry. And, you know, American Dragon Jake Long, really, it had some serious episodes, but it, it was funny, too. It was badass, but, you know, for kids. And it was really great. It was it's probably better now than when I, when I thought he was a kid. Now, again, it's been a while, so I, I can't really remember. There was some 
it's, it's just really awesome. You need to check it out. Number three, bronze medal of this list. The bronze medal goes to The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, the, <coughs> the original show. Now, this really got me addicted to Disney Channel. I was already watching Disney Channel way before that show was on, but I didn't really, it wasn't like one of my favorite channels. This is what made me decide to watch anything else on that channel, like Hannah Montana and stuff like that. And, my god, what were they, like 12 maybe when that show started? Or maybe the characters were 12, but they were a different age, I don't know. They're like in their damn 20s now, Dylan and Cole Sprouse, and they look weird as hell or something. At least Cole does, or Dylan. Fuck, I can't tell them apart anymore. The one who played Cody looks really weird now. Kind of looks like he's trying to be a hipster prophet. But that's beside the point. But then again, that might not even be a most recent picture that I saw earlier. But, um, so, the Sweet Lies and Cody, they're, you know, I guess I kind of explained the characters a bit. But here you had um, Esteban, Esteban, whatever. Uh, I think he was Mexican, I think, he, or Latino, I believe. Yeah, I believe he was. Um, and he was the bellboy, or bellhop, whatever. Bellboy by The Who. Make that random reference out there. Rest in peace, Keith Moon. Anyways, uh, Esteban was pretty funny. He had his phone. There was like that one episode where it's like, it's like, you guys talking? And I was like, uh, no, 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 we're, uh, we're playing, we're, like, Somebody was missing. I think Mr. Mosley was trying to find him or her. And it's like, no, no. It's like, you know, Marco. And then he answers himself, but wrongly. He says Pulo or something like that. It's kind of hard to understand his accent. It's like, first of all, it's like you don't answer yourself. And second of all, it's Polo. But whatever. But there was a <coughs> Maddie. I had a crush on Ashley Tisdale back then. I kind of feel bad for her career now. She was in Scary Movie 5. Think about that. That's that's a that's a that's a really low low. But you know, burn the song. Did I even explain who London was when I was talking about Zach the on deck? I think I did. She's the spoiled rich. Her dad owns the the Tipton franchise. Her last name is Tipton. Tip Tipton. Okay. And you know, some you know, I heard I saw like some kind of racist thing. Well, I don't know if it's, it was intentionally racist, but it's like. Zack and Cody, the only show where there's a smart blonde and a dumb Asian. You know, yeah, I guess I'd say it's kind of racist. But whatever, you know. There's such thing as smart blondes and dumb Asians in real life. Come on, people. Get your shit together. Anyways. I don't, know, I don't think Asians are proud that there are dumb Asians. But that's beside the point. Uh, kind of like blondes are probably not proud of that. You know, they're stereotyped as blonde. Uh, I mean, as... I can't talk to these. Stereotyped as dumb. My speaking skills are just so amazing, aren't they? Yeah, they're pretty, pretty amazing, aren't they? Anyways, and I remember there was an episode that Chris Brown starred on, and this was like a couple of months. It was, it was before, you know. And when they started doing reruns of that show, that was the one episode they would not rerun, and. Can you really blame them? Because they had the cheater girls in them. Okay, no. Obviously, but... <laughs> no. Um... Yeah. And they... There was that one episode with Jesse McCartney on there. It was pretty funny. It was, uh... I remember even the opening. Like, I'm not a fan of Jesse McCartney. I like the Beatles. I like old rock. You know, and stuff. And there was, like... They say, uh... They made a reference to that. Like, the... London and Zach and Cody and I think Maddie was there too. They were all waiting for Jesse McCartney to enter the building, the hotel. And they're all, and the mom's like, you know what's going on? And I was like, oh, and Mr. Mosley's like, oh, they're waiting for Mr. McCartney. He's like, man, Paul McCartney, I love Paul McCartney. And they're all like, who? And I'm like, even I get, I know who Paul McCartney is. I like Paul McCartney. But that's beside the point. And then it's like, no, no, Jesse McCartney. And then the mom goes, who? <laughs> so that's pretty funny. Um, God, that, that freaking Halloween episode where Esteban is in, is, he takes Zach, Cody, London, and Maddie, and, there, and I think Arwen might have been there, or he, no, he wasn't in there, 
No, wait. God damn it. I need to watch that again. That Zack and Cody is on Netflix. Both Zack and Cody and Sweet Life on Netflix. I think right as, as of right now, they're still both on Netflix. I really need to watch those episodes again. But, they, um, there's like, you know, the ghost, the, the room, what was it, room 666? Okay, not literally. It was like, I think room 13 on floor 6, something like that. Or floor 13 room, something, whatever, who cares. It was creepy as hell, especially at the end. Or it all turns out, it was kind of fake. Like the lighting and the table had a jack under it, making it move up and down and stuff. They were all just trying to scare him. Then, there's an actual ghost at the end. That's It was both funny and kind of scary. And it was... It was really crazy. There were some crazy episodes. I think there was one maybe like John Cena or some wrestler. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a sports person. And they just... No, it definitely was not John Cena. Was he even famous in 2005 and all that? I don't fucking know. I don't fucking care. He's in Fruity Pebbles commercials now. He was in Fred the Movie. What does, what does that tell you about his acting career? Okay. Fred the Movie. That's a thing. That's you know, there was a show of it. I'm glad that didn't last long either. But who even remembers Fred now? Did anyone? Did anyone get that reference? No. Okay. Well, that's good actually. So Zach and Cody. I almost said the Zach and Cody for some reason. God, there was some really remember rememberable episodes. And like I said, now I think everybody watched it. I believe. Even, like, I think maybe even adults watched it, maybe. I don't know. No, I doubt that. But you need to watch it again. If, you know, I just reminded you of a good chunk of that. If for any show on this list, for that matter. I think I've only had one show on this list that's actually from the 90s. So sorry, you know, people that were born in the 80s. You know, I mean, that's cool. I like the 80s, too. But. Number two. The best cartoon show Disney Channel has ever did. And I almost wanted to put American Dragon Jake Long at this spot, or Lilo and Stitch at this spot, because I think I watched them more at the time. But, Kim Possible. Okay, now, when this show came out, I thought this was going to be a stupid show, pandering towards girls. You know, when you're a little kid, you, you know, you don't, when you're, when you're a sexist kid, you don't really know any better. Well, I guess you kind of do. I mean, my parents didn't know. Or, wait, I'm rephrasing this already. You don't like things that you know, your friends would make fun of because they have a girl in it. Or they think they were girly. But a lot of guys watch this show, and it's not even... I don't really believe, you know... Well, I do believe that our shows are, you know, pandered toward a certain gender. Even though I, I guess that is kind of stereotyping a gender, I guess. But that's beside the point. You know, we're not going to talk about bromies or anything. I don't hate bromies, by the way. I have friends that are bromies. But anyways... I don't want, I don't want, I don't like to show myself, I don't get the appeal, but, you know, whatever. So, you know, it was not just for girls, it wasn't really even for boys, they had, it was for just a young audience. And this show did go on a few years, and there were a couple, like, TV movies. God, you know what, I just remembered something. When I was talking about Lilo and Stitch, they had four crossover episodes. One was with Recess. I regret not putting that on my list. Um, but to be fair, I don't think it started out on Disney Channel. I think it started out on something else. And then it kind of got rerun on Disney Channel. So sorry. If to be... Just just make that number 16, if you will. Okay, Recess. Or you can replace So Weird. So Weird can be number 16 and Recess can be number 15. But I'm not going to do this whole damn list again. Sorry, no. I'm already making this video. I'm not going to redo it. So... You know, they did a crossover recess, Proud Family, uh, Kim Possible, and American Dragon Jake Long. God, I, need to, I, I didn't talk about those episodes. Those were the best episodes, actually. Uh, maybe. But, yeah, with Kim Possible, you know, you got Wade, you got Rufus, who the Naked Mole Rap. Who remembers the Naked Mole Rap? I probably remember the lyrics to that to this day. And I cannot remember... I can't remember stuff I learned from last year in school. I can't remember stun, st stuff I learned Friday <laughs> when I was at school. Uh, and yet I'm somehow a straight-A student. That's beside the point. 
Uh, I don't mean to brag, sorry. Mm. But, you know, you, you got, God, 